Fiona Balfour, welcome to Business Spectator. Thank you um, very much. Let me just start off with the issue that's been, you know, been in the headlines a little mm -hmm. bit in the last six months or so. The idea of the glass ceiling, the mm -hmm. idea that it's much, much, much harder for women executives to make it to the top levels in this country. Firstly, from your perspective and your experience, how valid is that? How difficult is it for, for women to make it in the corporate world in Australia? Okay, so there's good news and bad news. Um, I think the current bad news is that statement is accurate. Mm. Today, top 200 companies, there is only 8% of uh, board directors, people in governance roles are female. Mm. Um, and um, most of them have been at the very, very top of their profession and their expertise. Um, so none of them are there by chance or out of anything other than, than hard work. Um, the journey to get there is, is quite challenging. It's a challenging journey whether you're male or female. Mm -hmm. And I think the real prior issue is if you look at the pipeline of executives mm. coming through, and if you wind it right back, the good news is today there are as many female graduates going into companies mm -hmm. as there are men, which is a, you know, that re simply reflects the reality of what's happening in Australian universities. Mm -hmm. So that's a big change. But what happens is something in mid-career. And in mid-career, a lot of women make the decision to leave the corporate environment. And the old myth used to be that they went off, had babies, mm -hmm. and didn't come back. Yeah. But if you look at the data, that's not true. Mm. In fact, if you look at the data, what's actually happening is that the women, yeah, they're leaving, they're having babies, they're generally speaking coming back to the workforce, mm. but after a little while, they're then resigning from the company they're in and they're moving to one that's either got a more supportive culture mm. or increasingly they're starting their own businesses. Okay. So you see this remarkable change happening and what that means is that when you look at the top levels of companies there's been very little change in what's happened at the chief executive c-suite level right mm -hmm. across australia well with regards to providing a more supportive environment i mean any company would it would be remiss of them to actually let go or to lose potentially good staff purely by not investing uh, resources mm -hmm. into providing more. Why is it that companies have never really looked into this? I think it's only become an issue in recent years um, simply because the pool, the pool of women, when I, when I joined the workforce, yeah. the number of female graduates who went into business was actually quite a small proportion, mm -hmm. whereas now it's over 50%. So by definition, if the companies don't start sorting this problem out, then they're going to lose half of their talent pool. Mm. And that's a very bad situation to be in. Apart from anything else, if you're in a, um, an organisation that's got a consumer focus, mm. women are the consumers in most families, regardless of whether they're working professionals or not. Mm. So um, you need to have, um, certainly in consumer and retailing facing organisations, mm -hmm. you need to have women in those roles to really understand the mindset of your customers. Do you think state governments or the central government uh, is doing enough from a policy Look, perspective? Look, the, the biggest, uh, my short answer is yes. Um, what happened in Canberra in the early 1980s was a series of policy changes. Promotion on merit was introduced into the Commonwealth mm -hmm. Public Service. Um, all interview panels had to have a woman on them and um, all interviews had to include one female candidate. Mm. Now the result of those three policy changes today is that if you go to Canberra and if you look at the senior executive and if you look at the permanent heads, there's a very healthy smattering of women. Mm. It's 40, 45, nearly 50 percent. Okay. It's what it should be. So I guess I'd argue that if those three principles were applied in the corporate sector mm. and a truly merit-based promotion was put in place, mm that there were females on selection panels, that there was always a female candidate, mm -hmm. you would get the change coming through. And perhaps um, that would make the culture one that was um, more effective and um, more enjoyable for women to work in. Mm. And I should say that a culture that's good for women is also good for the shyer, quieter, often um, uh, less A-type male. Mm. 
<laughs> and you know, the world without men like that is a very bad place. <laughs> So it, it's, it's good for those sorts of guys as well. The government has introduced, uh, I do believe, a mentorship program which, um, which is looking into taking certain, uh, you know, female executives and with certain prominent uh, business personalities, taking them under their wing um, and to mentor them into reaching the higher echelons of the corporate world. I mean, do you think these sort of programs are, are, are effective and uh, do, you, yeah, do you think the look, government needs to do more? Um, the government's certainly doing that. The other action is the Australian Institute of Company Directors mm -hmm. has established a world first program and it has um, a series of women in each of the major cities. I think there's 50 mm -hmm. in Sydney, uh, where I'm from, and uh, they're women that AICD has identified as being top 200 board ready. Mm -hmm. So they're women who are ready, who are skilled, who have got the right executive expertise, mm -hmm. depth of experience, and they're, they're ready. And they are being mentored, which mm. means that they have one of Australia's leading chairmen mm -hmm. who is being their guide, yep. who's reviewing their CVs, who's reviewing the way they present themselves in terms of articulating their skill mm -hmm. sets, mm -hmm. and is also making sure that they get introduced to various opportunities. So if you're as part of this summit, um, you know, we're looking at the future, we're looking at some of the risks and risk management. Uh, from the point of view of women and women's issue in Australia, mm -hmm. what are some of the future issues that we really need to be mindful of? Look, I, um, we have got to crack this pipeline problem mm. because it's 50% of our labour force. Skilled professional labour is going to be in dire shortage mm. as the baby boomers retire and move into retirement. And I'm at the tail end of the baby boomers, not at the beginning <laughs> of it. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be somebody who's going to be very interested in seeing um, a string of women come through um, and uh, sorting out um, the normality of um, maternity leave, return to work, um, getting um, childcare support accessible mm. uh, in, a, in a preferred way um, so that people um, have some choice about it. It, it. You still don't get much choice of mm. options um, and also getting a um, uh, a cultural adaptation in the workforce that it is actually okay to leave a bit early one night to go to a, a, um, your child's mm. musical performance because the reality is that with Blackberries and iPhones we're online and we're available all the yes, time anyway. Indeed. Peter Balfour, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for speaking to the Business Spectator. Thank you very much.